There, there's a, a, I guess the next question is, and I'll lead right into about infrastructure, is there's been, you know, talk on the Yakima City Council for a $19 increase in car tab fees. Or would you support something like that to pay for a lot of infrastructure projects in the city? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. Um, and I'm very clear about um, the reason we, we, not only in our district, but if we look in the hole in, the Yaka, in Yakima, you know, there are some of our, our constituents that, you know, are, are not going to be able to pay that, um, and are kind of, so it, it kind of opens the door to um, why are we in that position to begin with. And there's other ways. So we do know that there's state um, grants and we do know that there's federal grants that, that can be applied by. And actually, um, if done correctly, and um, you know, some of those are gainable grants that can come in and subsidize some of the stuff that's, that is being asked. Um, so there's, there's different ways to balance that off. Um, there always is different ways if, if we look into it more. Big challenges in this community facing our city. Um, what, uh, what do you think is like the, the top, top challenge that faces the city, top couple of challenges? Yeah, there's quite a few, huh? Mm -hmm. It's not just one. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the big one that I'm hearing um, within our city, and it kind of trickles down to our district as well, is the safety. You know, law enforcement, um, and you know, how is, um, you know, if there's an initiative that would be put in place again, and how is that initiative um, going to be, um, you know, um, addressed, in other words? So previous to the 2012 initiative, the gang initiative, you know, there are six pillars in there that needed to be completed. And I think we only got to the fourth pillar of that, if I'm correct. Um, and the last ones were um, basically um, the important ones that would keep the sustainability of making sure that this initiative was going to be sustainable. And that was, you know, organizing, um, developing um, organi organizations that would take on some of these, um, you know, keeping kids off the street, um, engaging. and. Um, and then the long-term sustainability of um, how are we going to be able to continue helping law enforcement? You know, is there grants out there developing that um, and working with our um, state legislative to make sure, um, you know, within if we need more money, what, you know, how does that land? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, maybe that's the same kind of answer that you would give to the next question, but gang problems. We've got a big gang problem in this area. Been a number of people wanting to find ways to, you know, find an answer to so the gang violence that we see, what do you think uh, it needs to be done in, in our community? So I come from a line of, of law enforcement. Yeah, um, my brother is, is um, law enforcement in Toppenish. I have cousins and family, law enforcement in Bank County and um, in the Richland area. So um, I do know that, um, that gangs is a big issue. And I do know that that needs to be addressed. But I also know that some of that responsibility also lands in our community. And um, we need to understand that um, not only do we need to support our law enforcement officers, but we need to bring up projects that are going to be sustainable that um, help address some of these issues and um, bring um, awareness to our community of exactly what's going on. And I think with that is bringing in different organizations. And, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, hugely go back because some of the work that I do for some of my clients is, is looking for grants and looking for um, you know, um, you know, I can say funding um, in different areas that is needed for our nonprofit organizations or project plate um, based um, projects that we do. So I think there's always there's always ways out there. We just need to have that um, that consistency to be able to find them. So what uh, you know, there have been a a lot of smart people uh, on staff uh, and on council in the past. Um, I'm sure they have looked. For grants, do you think then that we would need a like a full-time position as somebody that's a, a grant searcher? Because if the if you, the ease that you seem to think that they're out there, I would have thought that we'd have rounded them up by now. Mm -hmm. So either a you are super super good at this, or we <laughs> need to uh, maybe set aside somebody and make that a full-time job. Is that a, a consideration or what? You know, I would really consider that, right? If we want the best to come into our city and we want the best of, of our work, then we go to the specialists. You know, the same thing that we do for some of the committees that we go and um, develop and we find um, specific people to do the planning, the specific people to come and do the research. So if, if we are in the need of finding federal and state grants, and even local grants from different organizations that and, are developed. And council always is. <coughs> yes. 
Um, you know, that is something that I know in the past you guys did have, to my understanding, or I might be, if I, in the past, somebody that might have specialized directly on that and brought in some good grants. Uh, KIT News Time is 7.58. If you are just joining us, hey, we are talking to District 6 candidate uh, Michaela Razo. And Michaela, the last question would be, do you support the policing policy? The policing policy that would, even though officers don't do it now, would bar officers from asking about immigration status. You know, that, that comes down to the whole, um, <laughs> the whole sanctuary cities, welcoming cities. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty stick on you know, um, policy and law, right? Um, already in Yakima, um, the, what we have stated from our police officers has been very genuine. And um, I know that there, it's not about race, it's not about, you know, if, if you're of color, I'm gonna ask if you, if you have documentation or you don't. It's more if you break the law and you go into the process of being booked. Um, there is, a, there is, a, there is a, a, a system that needs to take place and that's when it's asked or that's when it comes up, right? Um, I don't think at any point there's been a case um, where our officers literally just stop because you're Hispanic or because you're African American or because you're Asian, you know, and I say that honestly because, again, I come from a line of, you know, family that is in law enforcement and um, they're Hispanic. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I do know, I do know that, um, you know, prior to me going into the line of wanting to work on education, you know, I was an explorer. I was going into the Reserve Academy and then pulled out and got married very young. But I do know the process that it takes, and I know our officers are true to what they believe in, and they stand by the law. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, <laughs> obviously, you're moving on. You're going to beat Joe, who's not running. So uh, <laughs> we look forward to having another conversation with you a little closer to time, all right? Thank you so much. You're tuned to The Source, 1280 KIT.